Rob's Child. No investment advice. Welcome to the show where we view financial markets through technical analysis, macro financial history, Benjamin Graham's investment philosophy, and of course, crystal ball gazing. Today is Thursday, September 18th, 2000, and oh, not the 18th. Sorry about that. The 19th, uh, 2024. In today's episode, I want to start by mentioning the initial jobless claims coming out today. Um, a little stronger than expected, less initial jobless claims than the market was expecting. Market movement today has obviously a lot more to do with digesting the Fed cut, um, the first cut, than anything else. Uh, the next main topic of today I wanted to bring up was actually the 10-year break-even inflation rate. You can find this chart on the Fred. I have been I have talked about this uh, chart before. This is called the 10-year break-even inflation rate. Basically, it uses the Treasury inflation-protected securities and compares the yield to the regular 10-year um, Treasury yield. And what it does is it, it basically states how much the U.S. Treasury bond market is pricing inflation. You know, this is probably the best indicator as to trying to figure out where inflation is and what, what the market currently believes about inflation. If you want to know what the market, what the smartest money out there believes is going to happen to inflation over the next 10 years, this is the chart to use. And I only bring it up <coughs> because, you know, it's pretty obvious to me at this point that the Fed is likely fibbing a little bit, saying that the only issue they're looking at is, you know, they don't want to more weakness in the labor market, as they said. You know, this chart indicates that very clearly the market is now pricing currently that we are just above 2%, basically as the expectation for inflation over the next 10 years. You know, going back to 2021, 2022, you know, this thing had gotten up to, or, you know, saying, oh, we might end up averaging 3% over the next 10 years. And we dropped pretty significantly, you know, dipping down to, you know, 2.1 as of March of 2023. And then it started going back up again. And then more recently, we started dropping much lower, and we finally got to a level of like 2.04, and then more recently 2.03, 2.02. So this number being priced into the market is giving the Fed, like, I think comfort with the idea that they're not worried about inflation. The market's not actually worried about inflation here. And with unemployment rising, it's like, just to remember, by the way, <clears throat> the federal funds rate, even after this 50 basis point cut, the yield curve is still completely inverted, which says that the market is actually still being strangled right now, just a little bit less. So this is just very important to realize just where we are exactly in, in this cycle. And at, I'm at the point now where I am starting to believe that the Fed might be way further behind on these cuts than I had previously thought. I mean, again, if this is being priced in, as the market is saying, okay, we're between, you know, the last reading of this, eh, it's updated today, it says 2.17%, and it was recently as low as, like I said, 2.02%. This market says that you know, we've already achieved the 2% goal. It's already over. So then I'm, it gets me to start thinking, well, why is the Fed still literally strangling the economy just a little bit less now just to see what happens? It's like, we're rolling over here, folks. Things are about to slow down. I think they're about to slow down a lot faster and a lot worse than anyone else uh, thinks that you uh, will hear talk about this out there. 
Daily reminders, the two-year, 10-year treasury yield curve was inverted for over two years, suggesting that we're headed into a bad recession or depression because this never happens. Last time it happened was right before the, before the Great Depression. We recently reverted on the 6th. This is usually the point when the economy basically just falls apart. Somerol was also triggered. This in the past has only happened during a recession and it just happened in July. The unemployment rate is going up at a fast rate. The S&P 500 PE ratio is at 29 without major earnings ex contraction and without bond yields being very low. Very expensive market. The rate cutting cycle just began yesterday with a 50 basis point cut saying that the Fed is cutting aggressively suggesting that they see a slowdown as well. And I don't even think again that we need a crystal ball to see that a market crash is coming. I also believe with my crystal ball rating that the Fed will not cut fast enough to save the economy. Sorry if you hear thunder in the background, that's real thunder, it's not a sound effect. On to the charts, we'll start with the S&P 500, this is SPX. It's a good thing I didn't say I'd eat my hat <laughs> if we broke to new times highs. We closed at an all-time high today, so the market can continue higher here. Just to be clear, this does not go against my narrative that I believe that the markets should be rolling over here, that things will be getting bearish. You know, the, the timing of it, you know, even Michael Burry was off by two years when he did the, uh, the big short there. I have good, I have very good reason to be bearish right now. I bought puts today on the triple Qs. Maybe, uh, I, I own puts on the SPY. I own puts on junk bonds right now. These are all areas that I believe are way overvalued and would make sense to drop in price from here. So um, yeah, I'm not getting scared off by my positions. Basically what I'm doing, by the way, is trying to maintain a 0.5% uh, uh, portion of my whole portfolio in uh, bearish options contracts. So when, if the trade goes against me, I just, I'm just buying more puts. Uh, trying to find, you know, my goal is to get as many as possible with the smallest amount of money. So I usually go pretty far out of the money um, to get as many contracts uh, as I can get with that amount. And I'll be selling those positions aggressively if, you know, if they go in my favor uh, at a fast rate. I'm not planning to hold them to expiration. Speaking of the triple Qs, this is the triple Qs. I believe we're still in this head and top uh, formation. However, you know, I drew this uh, trend line before and it seemed like we were really stuck in it and I'm gonna have to delete it because we popped right out of that today. You know, this is truly a crystal ball rating and you know, it, as far as thinking that this head and shoulders top will play out exactly as I see in my crystal ball. It would make a lot of sense if it did play out this way, but we'll see. With the stock market going up today, the VIX dropped, but not enough to get the October contract to normalize to get below these the next two months. It did drop below, it was yesterday, it was it was above as far out as the March contract and so we dropped a little bit in the VIX today but it's still very elevated on the future uh, curve, the VIX futures curve. So while you see on TV people saying, oh hey we're, we got the soft landing now and the market's at you know new highs and CNN business is saying yeah we're in green mode pedal to the metal baby uh you know the there's uh the the people that the, the professionals the professional money has uh more protection here than uh than normal remember folks the the goal of the professionals and the big institutions uh the big banks and everyone is to make sure that you lose as the uh, retail investor that's literally how they make all their money so they'll do everything in their power to make sure that you lose and uh so 
be careful with the bullish, you know, soft landing, everything's okay narrative at this point in the cycle. In my estimation, things are very, 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 very dangerous uh, in the stock market. Did I say very enough times? Yeah, I think I did. But yeah, the VIX, uh, the regular VIX is down a little bit today. Part of this as well is uh, we have options expiry tomorrow for re you know the traditional normal uh, options contract. And um, you know the, it's the institutions that sell this th these things. They want they need to make as much money as possible, so they need to um, you know for the rest of the week they'll put the market exactly where it hurts the most for the re uh, against the retailers so that they uh, keep the profits of uh, those premiums that they sell their co contracts at. I've been trying to draw some new lines on TLT to see where we might uh, stop dropping. We dropped again in TLT today, long treasury bonds. As you know, if you're following my show, I have like 55, 56% of my portfolio basically in TLT. If we take this low from July, connect it to August low, you know, we're right there at this line. So is this a buying point for the market? Maybe. Again, I really like treasury bonds right now because of where we are in the cycle. You know, when the stock market crashes and people run to safety, they tend to go into uh, bonds and so if you look throughout history, the value of treasury bonds, when there's when we get to the flush, when everybody like is forced to sell stocks against their will, um, that's when your tre your uh, treasury yields uh, drop to the floor, and that's when this thing can really spike. And usually that coincides, by the way, with a bottom in uh, junk bonds, which is the exact right time to get junk bonds. So I'm, I'm holding long treasury bonds uh, happily until uh, it all plays out. Speaking of junk bonds, as I've been saying in previous shows, it's like Mr. Market, few drops a gallon, a uh, few drops of gas in his tank going 100 miles an hour the wrong way down the highway with a water bottle full of something that's not exactly water. Uh, junk bonds is just, you know, TLT literally uh, went down a good amount today, and junk bonds are getting a bid. So there you go. There's Mr. Market. He just he's just gonna keep driving. As I said earlier in the show, fear and greed index on CNN. We're in greed. It has the feel of an army of redditors chanting, we did it, Reddit, we did it. I know a number of my shows have been getting a little repetitive lately. I'm saying the same things over and over again, and I'm going to tell you that I am likely to continue doing this. I will continue being repetitive because I believe what I'm saying in these shows is the important things to say and the important things to be thinking on a daily basis with little changes uh, here and there. You know, sometimes it, I think it's easy to forget about important things. It's easy to forget about the SOM rule. Uh, it's easy to forget, oh, you know, that the two year tenure has been inverted for two years uh, and then just inverted recently. It's, it's easy to forget that, you know, in the, when we get to the cutting cycle, uh, this is typically when all the really bad stuff begins. It's very easy to forget this when uh, the market is getting going higher and can can potentially keep going higher. I don't actually know how much gas is left in Mr. Market's tank here, but I do not want to be along for the ride. In fact, I'm betting against it with a very small amount of uh, of my portfolio and I'm holding things that I think are undervalued based on where we are in the market and the weight between different markets and that's all from me and my crystal ball hope you enjoyed thank you for watching and see you next time Rob's child